Okay, you've seen a lot about um, inverters and three phase drives on eBay. So here we have an Opti Drive, which is, uh, would you believe, made in Wales inverter or variable frequency drive. This particular one is the E2 model. I think you can see that, but it's uh, 1.5 kilowatt three phase output, uh, single phase input. And over here we have a three phase motor. In this case, it's a 0.55 kilowatt motor and it can be wired in both delta and star. So for 230 volt three phase, it needs to be wired in delta. Uh, now I'm going to have a go at trying to make these two connect and see if the inverter and the various features it offers can be worked first straight out of the box. So we'll Okay, the first thing to do is to take the top off the motor connections. So I've unscrewed the screws, put it off, and looking at this, you can see that the connections are going from left to right and so on. So it's going across ways basically. Now on this particular motor, there's a picture inside which shows that the motor is currently in this configuration and it's therefore in star. That is not for 220 volt operation. What I need to do therefore is change the links. So instead of going across, they go down. That will be then in 220 volts, three phase delta situation. I'll now do that. I've now taken all the uh, nuts off the inside of the connections. And if you now take these little links out, you can get them all off. And it's just then a matter of switching the round to go in this direction. One, two, three. That's now following the lid and it's now showing it in delta formation. I'll now tighten up those nuts and bolts. Okay, I've now connected those across. I've left the nuts and bolts off here because um, I'm going to connect the cable to here. So the next thing to do then is to run in the wire here. So I've got the potential then to connect to the um, drive, which in this case I now connect at the bottom. And helpfully the bottom is marked U, V, W, and the green on the left hand side is for the earth. And that matches up quite nicely with the markings on here, U, V, W. So I'm now going to wire it through. This, by the way, is uh, the thermistor, some sort of overload protection, and that again can be wired in later on. I'll show you how to do that later on. Right, the wiring is now in place. I've used normal um, three-core cable, fairly hefty duty, but the manual tells you what size of the cable to use as a minimum, so I've exceeded those. So I've got the earth connected with the normal earth uh, in the UK, the green and yellow. I've got blue and the red connected, blue and brown connected rather, and because I've only got three core cable I've also added an extra cable, separately cable, to um, connect the third phase. I've also put in another um, gland, and that gland I've used to connect up to the thermistor. So all I'm going to do now is turn out the other end of those into the bottom, in this case, of the Opti drive. So the three wires now are connected up. So the additional blue is on the U1, the ori original brown is on the V1, and the other blue is on the W1. So I've matched those across here. That's the external blue, that's the original blue, and that's the brown, and the earth is also connected. So those are made up. Now all we're going to do is make up the power and the control connections. Okay, so we now have the um, live and neutral and the earth fitted for the power input, in this case 220 volts. Um, they're marked up L and N, and the green one is the earth. And they're also moved on and connected up um, to one and two, a switch. Now, I haven't got a single way switch, this is a two way switch, but I'm using it just as a single pole switch. So it just switches on and off basically. 
and that's connected between terminals 1 and 2. And then I also have a potentiometer or a variable resistor, which has got three connections on it, and they're connected between 5, 6 and 7, 6 being the, um, the wiper component, the middle component of the um, potentiometer. All I need to do now is power it up and see if I can uh, get the parameters of the motor into the box. Right, we're now ready to do some settings. Now, before I start doing those, these are the ones we're talking about which are really um, in interesting to set for the first time. And, for example, parameter 1 is the maximum frequency, and the default is 50 Hz. Well, 50 Hz is the correct frequency for the UK, so I'll leave the default alone for now. You've got parameter 2, which is the minimum frequency, and that's 0. That means you can use the motor between 0 and 50, which gives you the full run range of the motor. Um, parameter 3 and 4, these are speed up times or acceleration and deceleration times. So how long does it take the motor to speed up to full speed and back down from full speed? And 5 seconds is the default again, so now I'm leaving those alone. Now the particular ones for this motor, the motor voltage, well, the default is 23240, which again is fine. But the uh, motor rating, the current for it, is 2.45, and I'm probably going to have to change that one. And last of all, the motor frequency, which again should be the default, 50 Hz for now. OK, let's try it. So here we go, I'm just doing the power for the very first time. And the motor says stop, which is quite handy. So I'm going to press this button, hold it down for two seconds, and you're now into parameters. So I now need to go to parameter 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Enter on that. So it's currently set to 7 amps. For my particular motor and from the side plate, I want 2.45. So I'm going to turn that down, which will hopefully then stop the motor having an overload or being burnt out through too much current. So I'm just holding the button down now. 2.4, I'll leave it that for now I think, accept that, ok that was parameter 8, um, I'll just go down to parameter 9, sorry, up to parameter 9, just check that out, yeah the default is 50 hertz, that's ok, and now I'll just go back through the other ones, and just show you the defaults, so parameter 7, which is the motor voltage, 230, that's fine, and for 6, which is the deceleration, oh, sorry, no, it's parameter 6 at the moment, I'll skip that for now. Parameter 4, I want to go to next, which I'm interested in, and that's the 5 seconds deceleration time, and parameter 3, 5 seconds the acceleration time. Parameter 2, which is the Motor frequency, which is the zero um, the bottom speed, so it should go down to nothing. And parameter one, which is the top speed for the motor, which is 50 hertz. All those seem okay, so I'm now going to press to go back to this. I'm going to run press there, hang on a minute. I'm going to press, get back out of that, and I'm going to get out of the parameters. Hmm. Hold that down for two seconds. Yes, back to stop. Okay, that's done. Okay, this sort of makes sense, but it's useful to see it, I think. Um, when you use the um, potentiometer to change the speed of the motor, so for example, if I turn it on now, the motor obviously going at a certain speed. In this case, that speed is well, about 1933. So it's not the full speed of the motor. If I just slow down a bit more though. Okay, so I've now slowed it down. And it's now running at um, 1355, 1360. Okay. If I turn that off, what happens, and it may be obvious to everybody else, it wasn't to me, but I found it quite useful is that it's remembered the last frequency we've used, i.e. the last speed. So I'm going to turn it back on again now. 
it's now speeding up and if I check the speed it should be around 13.55 again and lo and behold here it goes slightly under but not too bad quite a useful feature I think because it means you haven't got to keep on setting and stopping the uh, setting and changing the speed of the motor every time you turn it on and off so, uh, another potentially interesting thing that's you know, quite useful perhaps is that as you um, flip the button on the front it changes from Hertz display H to amps, A for amps and currently I'm running fairly slowly but I'm running at 1.5 amps as you increase the speed of the motor it will naturally draw more current as it approaches the top speed of the motor now I'm, I'm not loaded at all so it's still only quite low amperage but at least it's one way of checking out how many amps you are using in the motor a couple of uh, other changes now I've taken the, uh, the wiring from the um, motor overload and I've wired it up to 10 and 11 that's now complete I've also put a second switch into the system that's wired between 1 and 3 um, I guess the more wires you want to have control with switches and things number one's going to get pretty full so you have to bring it out to another uh, some sort of uh, connector for now anyway I've got two switches in there now the original one between 1 and 2 and the new one between 1 and 3 now what this is about is about reversing the motor so let me just show you what happens I'll turn it on now with the original switch and the motor is going hopefully you can see that that way and I'll turn it off now slow down so if I now turn the switch the new switch which is down here the motor is now going the other way and obviously I've still got speed control in either direction off the original potentiometer that was fitted now to get this to work you have to go and change parameter 15 and make it 5 but to access parameters above 14 you have to go and set P14 to a value of 101, 101. Now in my book, it said, my manual, it says that's the default. It wasn't. I had to physically go to the panel, hold it down to go into parameters, and then set P14 to 101. Once I've done that, I could then go up to P15, which you couldn't access before, and I set that to 5. And those simple changes they give me the ability to have the motor going either forward or reverse depending on which way you think is forward and reverse okay i'm going to work on putting these into the control panel talk to you later